Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Naomi Casiro. For those of you who don't know me, I am a physiotherapist in Vancouver, BC, and the founder of NeuroFit BC, which is a Parkinson's specific physiotherapy company. So I am here today to talk to you a little bit about what I have learned at the International Parkinson's and Movement Disorder Society Congress, which is happening here in Vancouver. So I'm going to give you updates each day on some take-home messages and what I've learned through the different educational seminars and practical, practical seminars that we've been doing here. So today was day one of the conference and the major talk that we went to today was talking about treating motor complications in Parkinson's disease. So we learned a lot of interesting stuff and some of which I'm going to share with you today and some of which my colleague Sarah King from Austin, Texas is going to share with you through her page. So the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about today that we learned that was very interesting, which is just a little tidbit of information, is the fact that they are actually starting to do spinal cord stimulation as a trial for freezing of gait. So that was just a very interesting up and coming research area that I thought was really neat and is seeming to show a lot of promise for freezing of gait. So that's the first little tidbit that's coming up. Hopefully we'll get good results from that and get some really awesome tools to help people with severe freezing of gait. The next thing I wanted to mention that they talked about in this lecture was that um, Tai Chi and dance showed very good results for freezing of gait. So we run a dance for PD class through NeuroFit, but there are lots of dance for PD classes around the country in Canada and in the US. So dance is a really, really great way to work on freezing of gait. And if you're looking for a dance class in your area, you can check on the Dance for PD website to find somebody who's certified. So it's really important to find somebody who's certified in Dance for PD, and you can use that as a really great tool to help with freezing of gait. The next thing that I wanted to talk about that they mentioned in this seminar that was very, very interesting was the idea of cueing and freezing of gait. So they showed us this really neat video with a man who was having severe freezing of gait, and then they used this tool to help him. So what it was was a tool that was in his shoe, and every time he stepped, a laser, a line, came across in front of his foot. So what that did was cue him to be able to step over the line and reduce his freezing significantly. Now this is a really, really cool tool. They have walkers and canes as well that can produce a laser line to help people who have severe freezing of gait to step over that line and improve their freezing. One of the very, very interesting things that they mentioned in relation to this is that cueing is a great tool for freezing of gait, but it's not the only important piece. What happens with cueing is that it takes focus and attention to constantly be focused on it. And that can become very difficult when you're trying to live your life and do functional tasks. So for example, if you're walking and you're able to do it with cueing, that's great. But what I always tell my clients is what happens when you are walking and talking with a friend or walking and trying to figure out directions or walking and eating or anything like that. So a very interesting point that came out of it was that cueing is not the be all end all of freezing of gait. It's a very good way to improve it. But one of the really important things is to make sure that we're incorporating with cueing, building that into functional activities and functional exercises so that you can then manage your freezing of gait without the constant cueing as well. So we're trying to build those cognitive and motor patterns so that we can start to take away the cueing and you still have remaining those improved motor patterns and improved freezing of gait. So for therapists, uh, those of you who are therapists who are watching, what that means is that when you are practicing with Parkinson's clients and doing exercise sessions, you really need to be aware of how much you're cueing and whether or not you're starting to take away that cueing over time. So we know with Parkinson's that practice and repetition of movement is important, but it's also very important how you do that practice and repetition. So starting with a lot of cueing is great to get the results you need, but what we really want to do to make that functional over time is start to reduce that cueing and see if we can get those continued results. So for clients, the takeaway message here is that Repetition is important, right? We need to repeat those movements over and over and over and over so that we can eventually take away the cueing bit by bit and you can still maintain the, that movement capacity in functional environments. So I always tell my clients, you know, it is not about doing it once, it's about doing it every day. We need to repeat and that's a really, really important thing when you're looking at your exercise program and trying to figure out what optimal exercise for Parkinson's is, that repetition is a really, really important key. One of the other things we talked about today that ties into that is posture and alignment in Parkinson's. And we were talking about some uh, more severe syndromes, things like PISA syndrome and captocormia, which are syndromes, uh, postural syndromes in Parkinson's. And one of the things that they were saying is that they, when they did the research studies, the one research study that they did on 
um, therapy and rehab with these postural disorders was that they did have a positive effect, but the clients were doing 90 minutes of exercise a day. So doing 90 minutes of training programs a day, getting a lot of repetition. And that is what they think significantly contributed to making those positive gains. So the last thing I'm going to talk to you about today is proprioception and Parkinson's disease. So one of the things that they mentioned in the lecture today, which rang very true and is something that I talk to my clients about a lot, is the effect of lack of proprioception and disturbed vestibular systems on motor complications and Parkinson's disease. So proprioception is the feeling of where your body is in space. And we know that this can be very impaired in Parkinson's patients, and that can significantly affect things like posture and gait. So as therapists, we need to remember when we're training that because that proprioception can be impaired, we need to make sure that we are including ways in our programs to help optimize that. So that is the proprioceptive system and the vestibular system. So that's why, you know, in your training, whether you're a patient or a therapist, you'll tend to see a lot of things like um, target practice, things where you're using auditory and visual cues to tell you where your body is in space. So I always tell my patients, we try to get you to move big, but often you think you're moving bigger than you are. So that's why we use a lot of things in my videos and things like that, like boom whackers or stepping over back and forth over lines. It gives you the understanding and a clear, um, it gives you a clear concept of where your body is in space. If you're going back to hit a wall with a boom whacker, you know if you've got your arm all the way back or not, because you will hear that noise and you'll get an instant response, you'll get an instant feedback mechanism of where your body is and whether or not you're getting that big movement. So this is easy to say, but of course, you know, when it comes to Parkinson's, we want to give you practical. So what my colleague Sarah and I are going to do is a little video, video for you today on a few exercises that you can do to work on proprioception and to make sure that you're getting the type of movement you want and that you need to improve those Parkinson's symptoms. So if you take a peek on the page, you'll see right here that there's going to be another video popping up on on proprioceptive exercises that you can do to help train that system with Parkinson's. So thanks for joining me today, guys. That is all the kind of take home points that I wanted to give you today. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Like I said, stay tuned for that video coming up with a few proprioceptive exercises you can do to uh, learn those skills, but I'll be back tomorrow with keynotes and points from what I learned there. I hope you guys have an awesome night and thanks for joining me.